everyone cody from mac telecom networks in this video we're going to be checking out the brand new usw mission critical switch the switch primarily has a built-in ups into it and we could add a 48 volt battery to the back of it i don't have a 48 volt battery but we will do a second video when i do have one if you're new here please subscribe and hit the bell icon if you'd like to hire me for network consulting visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com you can find me on twitter at mactelecomn and we now have Ubiquity affiliate links. So if you'd like to support the channel, I will post those down in the description below. So first, as always, let's go take a closer look at the USW Mission Critical Switch. The Unify Mission Critical Switch features a 1.3 inch color touchscreen with AR switch management. It has nine one gigabit RJ45 ports. Four of them are PoE plus and the other four are PoE plus plus. It also features a nano SIM and a reset button. On the back, we have two power output ports. We have one DC terminal block for an external 48 volt DC battery and then one power input port. The switch is bigger than their standard switches, coming in at 17.4 inches by 18.9 by 1.7 inch. Included in the box with the USW mission critical switch, we have our two rack ears and then we have all the screws and the cage nuts that we need. Comes with a locking power cord and then this new locking power cord, which is 48 volt DC, which will be used with a piece of their hardware that hasn't been announced yet. And the last thing in the box is the rails to mount the switch to our network rack. Before we go and mount this into my rack, there are a few other features with this switch. It includes a 368 watt internal lithium ion backup battery. And we need to be at unified version of at least 6.2.26. If we take a look at the picture over here, this is the product I was talking about that is yet to be released. And we haven't even seen anything about it. But we could tell by the USW Mission Critical, we have a USB battery that is behind it. And that's why they include that 48 DC power cord that we're able to lock. So I'm not too sure when they're going to announce these USB batteries. Now I'm going to grab the switch, the rails, and we're going to get it mounted into my network rack. To get the switch ready for mounting, we need to put on the small rails. This is done by screwing in two Phillips screws. Now that the back rails are on, we need to put on the rack ears, and this is done by screwing in the four Phillips screws into each side. Now the switch is downstairs, the next thing we needed to do is mount the long rails onto the rack. We're going to be going into rack unit 19 as I already have some rack studs put in there at the front. We won't be using the cage nuts to hold the switch in. Now all we need to do is put the switch onto the rails and push it back. To give the mission critical switch network access, we're going to plug in an RJ45 SFP into my aggregation switch pro. From there, we'll connect port number nine from the mission critical switch to the SFP. The switch is all powered up and ready to be adopted into our controller. The install for the mission critical switch was pretty straightforward and easy. The rails were a bit wobbly, but once I got the switch in there and screwed in, it was stable. Now let's go ahead and get it adopted. We can see here that we have the USW mission critical switch pending adoption. I'll click on the switch and then we'll press adopt. This will take a few minutes to update, so I'll be back and we'll take a look at the switch. The switch is now adopted into my Unify network controller. And looking at the switch, a lot of it is the same as any other switch. We have our model, MAC address, IP address, and the firmware version. We could see the fan level is set to 25. We could see the uptime, memory usage, and load average. So on the back of the mission critical switch, there's those two power input ports. I had to decide what is critical in my network. So the UDM SE is critical. If the power goes out, I want to make sure that stays online as well as my aggregation switch because that feeds all my other switches, even though they would go down. Now we have a couple new drop down menus. So we have power source. If we click the drop down, we could see that it's AC power and it's online. If we look at the battery, we could see that it shows internal battery and the battery status is charging and we're at 43% right now. The battery type is lithium battery. And then we have battery storage capacity. We also have power usage, current volt and health status. As of right now, I don't have an external battery plugged into the switch, so there's no stats showing up. But once I do get an external battery, we will do another video about this switch. We can take a look at the uplink and it's showing us we're connected to the USW Pro aggregation on port 30 
and on the mission critical switch we're on port 9 and it's going gigabit speed. There's no power and we can see our download and our upload packets. I have nothing plugged into the mission critical switch right now so there's no downlinks but I am going to plug in a Unify Access Hub. Now we can take a look at our insights and this is going to show us our power utilization. So the total power that this switch is using right now is at 28% which is 68 watts out of 240 watts. The outlets on the back are using 49 watts out of 80 watts and then we can see the internal battery is using 4 watts. The external battery is showing 0 because there's none plugged in. Under statistics, this is nothing new, it's just showing us our CPU and memory utilization. Now looking at the settings, we can see all the ports, the port speeds, and if it's in mirroring or RSTP discarding. We could give this name a switch if we'd like, and then we could also do some port configuration. Now if we look under outlets, we could see both of the outlets are being used. We could click on one of the outlets. We could turn the outlet power off. We could name the outlet, which is great if you need to do troubleshooting or reset the port and we could turn the outlet power off. So if you're using this port with your ISP modem, this could power cycle your modem if the internet goes down when the modem is plugged into this outlet. That's kind of like their smart power plugs or their smart power bar. And we could also do a manual power cycle. Everything else in these settings is default, so we're not gonna cover that. Now we've seen all the settings of the switch. If we go back to our battery, it's been plugged in for a little while and we can see that the battery capacity is full and it's at 100%. If we look at the switch ports, I've also plugged in at two Unify Access Hubs, which are using PoE++. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna unplug the main power source from the mission critical switch and see how long the battery stands up for. Now with the power cable unplugged from the back, we can see the power source is the internal battery. And under the battery status, it's saying discharging. So I'm gonna leave this for a little while and see how low it goes. All right, so the main power from the mission critical switch has been out for about two hours and we could see the battery capacity is just under 70%. So going based off that, this will probably give us about six hours. The only things I have connected to this right now are my UDM SE and my aggregation switch, as well as two Unify Access hubs. We're only using two out of the eight PoE ports, so if you have more devices plugged in there, it will drain the battery faster. Now, why would I use this network switch? Well, I would use it with my Unify Access. If the power goes offline, at least my UA hubs would be online. In saying that, I would probably have my Unify Access on some other external power source, like an Altronics box. I'm not really too sure what I think about this and if I can recommend it. It has very limited use cases. You could just go out and buy a UPS. But if you need some PoE++ ports, it does give you that battery backup in it. So that is a positive. As for the Nano SIM, I'm still not too sure what that's for. I would assume it's for some sort of backup. I'm waiting on Ubiquiti's answer on that to get back to me and then I'll let everybody know. If you have any questions about this video, please leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.